Well, last time I made a TCT related video, you guys seem to like it because all you guys are from TCT. We're gonna be looking at everyone's favorite community tank related meme, the fish keeping iceberg. Now the iceberg, what it is essentially is a categorization of the different levels of fish keeping. You start with brainlet, then you go to normal, then you go to nerd, then you go to autist, then you go to elder god, then you go to ascended, then you go to question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, and then finally it's all capped off by fish wizard. Let's talk about each of these different categories. So let's start off with brainlet. Brainlet is a uh, sort of where everyone starts, but then when someone asks them how, what their first tank was, they pretend that it was the normal category. So yeah, in brainlet tier, you have you know your, your normal sort of brainlet things, the kind of things you get when you just have a fish tank, but you don't really consider it a hobby. So stuff like giant community freshwaters with plastic plants, monster aquariums, I'm talking about like people who get like 20 ballast sharks in a 10 gallon, or that's not really a monster tank, I guess, because they don't know it's gonna be a monster. So I'd say more so like people who get a 55 gallon, which is also on the list, and like show it with like three paku. Uh, you know, you got your ornamental betas. Those are a pretty common brainlet sort of thing. You got your abomination live bears. I'm guilty of this one too. Some of us are guilty of these things. And it's important to just sort of accept these and then just move on because as long as you got some categories lower, you're not considered in the brainlet category. Okay, it's not like we add up your points in each one. If you got something in Fish Wizard and you got something in Brainlet, we're gonna call you a Fish Wizard. So just keep that in mind going forward. I also have listed here uh, a few that people probably wouldn't figure out firsthand. Uh, first of all, Smashed for the Clownfish refers to like deformed and like genetic abominations. One that looked like this. That's what we're talking about. Uh, the second one is uh, Ecospheres within brackets Dustin Pack. Dustin Pack never knows what he's doing and that's why I put him there for the ecospheres but I put life in jars down in the nerd category because he actually knows what he's doing I wanted to separate the two because there's a lot of people who follow one guy there's a lot of people who follow another guy so it becomes confusing there just wanted to clarify let's move into the normal category we got your um you got your pothos your low-tech planet soft reef basically this sort of stuff just starts to get a little bit more interesting a little less stupid it gets into kind of normal category where you know we got like a nice little jungle planted tank with some cherry shrimp Maybe you've got a beta in there. Maybe you've got some tetras and some quarries. Maybe it's a decent sized community tank with some live plants. You know, this is where it starts to get more interesting. Moving into the nerd category, we have some more intelligent things that are still considered somewhat normal. You've got some more advanced saltwater related tanks. You've got your macroalgae and your um, stony polyp, whatever the hell they're called. Um, corals. I don't know, man. You think I do salt? You've seen my tanks. And then you got your black water tanks. That's where you're starting to get really based. You got your wild betas and your um, biotopes start coming in this category as well as high tech planted. You know, when you got your CO2 running and your high quality lights that aren't just lights you found on the side of the street. Uh, your rare ornamental goldfish, your nano tanks. I'm talking about the kind of ones you do weekly maintenance on. And uh, your wall stud tanks as well. Oh, yeah, and also brackish. Uh, now we move into the oddest category. Now this is where things get a bit more interesting. You got some... Some more funny things, some more mean tier things. It's not just like, you know, you're bad, you're good. We got uh, wild collected freshwater biotopes, cold water salt, you know, some generic kind of cool things. But then we got terrestrial plants underwater. I've seen one guy do it. He's a guy on YouTube who breeds guppies and bottles. I don't really know if he belongs in this category, but just throwing him out there. Uh, you got your centerpiece glowfish. That's another fun one. So uh, just imagine you have a school of black skirt tetras in this beautiful aquarium. And you got one pink tetra just in the middle. I know a guy who has it. Moving into Elder God, things get really interesting. You got your car battery biotope. Just imagine for a second having a five gallon fish tank full of goldfish set up in your car, running off the car battery. <laughs> you got your water wisteria carpet. Everyone loves a good daily trimming for a tank. Uh, you got coming inside of a jellyfish and surviving. Not a difficult one to achieve if you're picking your jellyfish. I mean, if it's a box jellyfish, you might be in for a hard time. Treating ick with garlic just seems kind of unnecessary, but that's what this whole category is about, is being unnecessary. You got your Walmart biotope, which I picture in my head as a five gallon aquarium with rainbow gravel and 10 ballast sharks and a single quarry. And I don't know, maybe 400 pond snails, but that seems like an exaggeration, because let's be real, anyone who buys fish at Walmart doesn't even know what a live aquatic plant is. Uh, then you got your algae scapes and per my personal favorite, the piss cycling. Because, uh, you know, you know, tank needs ammonia to cycle, so, you know, just piss in the bloody tank. That's what pros do. Over in the ascended category, things get a lot more interesting. We have the upside down water bottle CO2, which I definitely just didn't include on the list so that I could be considered in the ascended category. Uh, you got your lemonade tanks, your lobster roids, your mouse paludarium. I hope to see that build soon, Matt. I know you can make it happen. We got your macroalgae monopoly, your semen spawn ice pod. You got your self-sustaining tank, which is beyond a wall stat. A wall stat is like, you know, you don't have to do that many water changes and all your plants are kind of reusing the same energy that 
your fish are putting out. Self-sustaining tank is the tank feeds itself. The tank does the tank just does everything for you is basically what I'm saying. Oh, and also drinking tank water. Yeah, that's that's a good surefire way to make sure your send is. Every time you do a water change, I don't care how much you're removing, drink it all up. It's really good for your immune system. I, I promise you. Down in the question mark, 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 question mark. We have some other interesting things, uh, including a dishwater tank. Flowerhorn community, trimmed valve scenario carpet, live bears in a reef tank, which which is completely achievable, by the way. I'd love to see some more people do that because it is hilarious. Illegal glowfish breeding, because remember they've somehow copyrighted life, so you, you can't you can't breed them legally. You can breed them, but you can't sell them, so that's interesting. Uh, you got your immersed coral, you know, just let that coral grow out of the tank. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure that doesn't omit one of the main requirements of it. Uh, you got your deep water salt, you got your marine mammal keeping, which goes right alongside with nano whales. And of course your hard jellyfish and your male beta sorority. Finally, at the very bottom of the barrel, we reach fish, 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 fish wizard category with my six personal favorites. Bleach dipping fish. Now, we've all bleach dipped a plant now and then to quarantine it. I don't do it personally. I like my pond snails. I don't mind scooping out a handful of them and crushing them to add calcium to my tank. But if you want to, if you want to avoid this, in the same vein of avoiding um, avoiding pests on your plants, you can avoid disease in your fish by dipping them in a little bit of bleach. Just let them swim around in there for about five minutes, and they'll be good to go in the aquarium. Uh, freshwater coral, yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but coral can actually be acclimated to freshwater. Um, it requires a long period of time. You basically have to drip acclimate it for like a month, and there can't be any temperature fluctuations. But if you keep that all in check and uh, provide enough calcium once it's in the aquarium, you should have a fine time keeping your freshwater coral alive. Uh, in improvised moray eel euthanasia, we're not going to talk about because it's going to give one of my viewers a panic attack and send him into a um, post-traumatic stress disorder spiral into insanity. So we're, not, we're just going to ignore that one. Liquids other than water. Yeah, this goes with the lemonade tank up in ascended category. But basically, yeah, if you slowly acclimate your fish enough, you can basically acclimate them to any sort of water conditions or even not water. Lemonade, milk mercury try it out one time i'm sure it'll work out fine 40 gallon pond snail breeder we all need pond snails to feed our various fish such as pea puffers and uh yeah that's about it so um if you want to make you, this process even more efficient you can uh, get a 40 gallon and fill it with pond snails and let them breed i'm sure it'll be a great use of space and time and finally we have the wallstead saltwater so a lot of people don't know this but um saltwater plants um they're not there's not very many you got your mangroves you got your seagrass and the rest is kind of you know macroalgaes which don't really count as plants but a lot of people don't know this is that you in the same way you can acclimate any fish to any aquatic environment you can also acclimate any plant um again it takes way less time than the coral only about a week but once you've acclimated the plant you can easily just chuck potting soil under the under your gravel in your saltwater aquarium and you'll have a wallstead saltwater uh, also the macroalgae can also benefit from this if you plant the macroalgae in the dirt it'll actually grow roots despite being an algae uh, yeah, everything I say is 100% true in this video. So I hope you guys learned something all and hopefully more of us will learn to bleach dip our fish, use liquids other than water, and acclimate our coral to fresh water so that we can create a more sustainable and better future for this entire world as a whole. I'm a spiritual fish lad. I make terrible content. Hit the subscribe button if you like it. And um, yeah, that's all I got to say. Check out my SoundCloud.